Thank you very much, sir. It's a uh, great honor to be here. And I think it's perfectly uh, in, in order that uh, we have a global peace conference in which the question of Korean unification is at the core of the global peace conference. The fact is that when we are talking of global peace, there is, in my view, it's very difficult to find a threat as big as the threat posed by the division of Korea on global peace. You have other threats as well. You have, for example, uh, the threat of religious fundamentalism, of fundamentalism breeding terror. It's indeed a very terrible threat. But the potential consequences of going unchallenged, this division of the Korean Peninsula, the potential consequences of going unaddressed, the nuclearization of a part of the Korean Peninsula, this can wreak much greater havoc on the international community than even this kind of Wahhabi religious fundamentalist terror. I mean, fundamentalist terror has got its victims already. Uh, the divided Korea, after a, for a long time, has not really had victims except in North Korea. But the reality is potentially millions of people can be the victims if you allow the current trajectory of the division of the Korean Peninsula to continue. Millions of people, uh, and I'm using the word quite, you know, I'm not using the word millions as hyperbole. I'm using the word millions as a scientific approximation. Maybe three to six million people may even perish if there is an unbridled consequence of the division of the Korean Peninsula. If certain tendencies that we are seeing over the last 20 years continue into the next 20 years. Which is why it's very good that the Global Peace Convention has put front and center the issue of Korean unification on its agenda. Because this is a very important issue. Unfortunately, because it is in a corner of the continent of Asia, because North Korea is relatively speaking a small, I mean, in terms of land mass, not a very large land mass. And because the headlines don't always figure what happens in North Korea, it's not a regime that talks to the press. I mean, I don't think that you can have a situation with the North Korean leadership has ever spoken to the press in the way, for example, the South Korean leadership confronts the press all the time. But because of these various reasons, this issue has not really been in the global debate to the extent that it deserves. Now, whereas in my view, I regard this issue as being even more deadly and even more dangerous than the question of religiously oriented fundamentalist terror. And as we all know, fundamentalist terror has been extensively reported, is extensively reported, and just a few days ago, very sadly, a German citizen lost his life at the hands of these terrorists here in this very wonderful country, a country like the Philippines, which is known for its tolerance, which is known for its civilization, which is known for the wonderful courtesy of its people. Sadly, a few individuals in this who are infected with this horrible uh, perversion of, of religious feeling they have taken away the life of this German, and as a consequence, you have a surfeit of media attention about that, whereas there is no media attention, frankly, about the far greater danger that is there north of Manila, north of the Philippines, north of Seoul, and that is the danger that is passed by the steady progress of the North Korean leader, regime. I mean, I use it, the word NKL, North Korean leadership, in my paper. The steady progress of the NKL towards a weaponized nuclear capacity. Now, my argument in this paper is very clear. You have, for example, the world stood by and watched as another country where there is a very strong religious element. In fact, the army of that country has got jihad as its motto. And in that country also, the world watched as that country expanded its nuclear weapons and in fact was enabled 
with the help of one of its friends in Asia. I'm not going to name that friend. It's a very large country. But that country helped North Korea. That country has helped this country also, which I'm talking about, which is Pakistan. North Korea is even more dangerous than Pakistan, much more dangerous, for the reason that the North Korean leadership is much more autonomous of the world than the Pakistani leadership or the Pakistan military. The Pakistan leadership, the Pakistan military, extensively deals with the outside world. The North Korean leadership, hardly at all. So you have a leadership that is, you know, when we talk about the hermit kingdom, they are truly hermits. They are truly in their own sealed cocoon. And this is a grave danger because what it means is the world cannot reach them with reason. The world cannot reach them in the sense of human contact. And this makes them uh, maybe adopt a course of action which could be extremely negative for the world. Let's not forget that there have been regimes in the past in other parts of the world which have been suddenly ruled by people who had very little contact with the outside world. Now, in my paper, I've used the example of Germany in the 1930s. I've used the example of Adolf Hitler. And, and we cannot forget that Hitler did not visit a single foreign country ever in his life. If you take Austria, for example, Austria he saw as a part of Germany, but he never, he never went to any other country barring Austria and Germany and he had no contact at all with the outside world. And as a consequence, certain concepts, certain very poisonous and toxic ideas gave birth in him. And he was unfortunately able, before the international community could take decisive action against him, he was able to wreak havoc, and the most terrible kind of human havoc that, frankly, civilization has seen since the time of, I mean, if I may say so, many, many thousands of years ago when there were a, 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 a very bad war, a, a kind of conquest in the world. Now, in that, when we look at the history of the 1930s, I would like to compare what is happening in, in, in North Korea today to what was happening in Nazi Germany and to warn that we allowed Nazi Germany to strengthen itself, we allowed Hitler to launch a war, we did not stop him when we, were, when we could have stopped him. And we cannot afford to make the same mistake with North Korea that we made with Nazi Germany under Hitler. As I said in my paper, in 1936, he occupied the Rhineland. At that point in time, the French armies could have very easily driven him not only from the Rhineland, but right to Berlin. And in fact, removed him from power. Even if they had removed him from the Rhineland, it could have had an impact in Germany and the German people themselves may have understood that this man is leading them to disaster and they may have checkmated him and prevented him from doing more harm. Unfortunately, he was allowed to get away with, with the Rhineland, he was allowed to get away with Czechoslovakia, he was allowed to get away with so much and even after the conquest of Poland for a long time, he was allowed to get away with the result that he took over large parts of Europe and then attacked the Soviet Union, which was his nemesis. The point I'm trying to make is, it is not an option for the international community to stand by and watch North Korea develop its nuclear weapons and develop its nuclear weapon uh, missile capacity that can tr transmit these nuclear weapons and wreak havoc. Because if this develops, now I've talked to scientists in my country, and you know, as you know, we are a country that ha we have developed for self-defense our own nuclear weapon systems. We have developed our own missile and space systems. And we have done that because we know that if we are threatened in this kind of fashion, no other country is going to help us. And there are more than a billion people to protect. But being a democracy, there's a safety wall. Even in the case of Pakistan, even though it's a religious state, there's a safety wall in the sense of contact with the rest of the world. There is no such safety wall in North Korea. It is neither a democracy, nor is it in contact with the rest of the world. With the consequence, it's an extremely dangerous situation. So my point is very clear. We have to take action on North Korea before it reaches the Pakistan stage of nuclearization and missile capacity. Now, how is this possible? 
this is why i have talked about christ and buddha you know you have buddha as the fountain of wisdom and this is why i was saying the north korean leadership in my view if it is confronted with an impossible choice it will come to a rational uh, decision and that impossible choice is either destruction or safety security and honor now it, i know it is going against i mean a lot of our instincts to talk of pardon to talk of honor where the north korean leadership is concerned but my point is so many people have been killed in korea so many people have been endangered across the region because of this leadership please let us avoid any more people being killed any more people being endangered and if that means that we have to show what i call a bright sunshine policy not only a sunshine policy but a bright sunshine policy let us shine that bright sunshine and hope the north korean leadership will then move into that sunshine and then we will have a situation of resolving of this issue and a great people a noble people will once again be united but if that does not happen if the north korean leadership continues to operate in the darkness that has been operating in for last 70 years and more if it continues to operate under these conditions then there is no choice but to ensure that the missiles and the nuclear systems are removed by the use of armed force and which is why i support theater defense in south korea i support theater defense in japan i support theater defense in fact you know in 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 even in my own country it's important for us to get those defenses there to get those defenses operational it's important for us to work out an operational plan of action that can ensure that before this threat mutates to a level where we can do nothing about it before this hitler goes from 1936 to 1939 we move now and remove this danger forever this conference is a step in that direction and i am grateful to be a part of it thank you